Hello, my name's Graham. This is an OVK2. It's an Odovac kit which must be used in conjunction with a Fantec fan for the use of ventilating different sort of odours or steams out of your bathrooms, laundries and so forth. This is one of the kits which can be used with an OVK2. Here we are, we are going to fit off an OVK2 kit. In, um, in this instance we are using an inline fan um, but all fans are ne need to be fitted as per instructions. With your fan installed, attach your flex, then above where your toilet is positioned downstairs and where your boss junction is to be going, you need to cut the flex by using a normal Stanley knife. And then just with a set of wire cutters, just cut the wire which is the reinforcement of the flex. After you've cut the duct, you need to put your boss junction, which is part of the OVK2 kit, into the area where the cavity is for the wall down to your toilet. If you can't go straight down, you can always move that to the, to the side and put a 90 degree bend on it and insert it through the, through the closest area. Then you just need to reattach the other length, the other side of the uh, flexible duct which you've already cut. Once a boss junction is in place, you need to feed the 50mm pipe up through the wall cavity into the bottom of the boss junction. When drilling a cistern, especially a bitumen china, you need to determine where the water level is inside your, your cistern, which is easy to find by the float inside. Once you've determined that, when, when you want to position your hole, most cisterns have already got a hole, which is an inlet for water. You try to roughly keep it in the same sort of dimensions as that same hole. So you measure your centre of your hole, but the measure from the edge of your bitumen china to the centre of the hole, which is roughly 80 centimetres, then you just transfer that across to the other side just so you can find where you want the centre of your hole. Then you try to put it at least from that top lip, at least 10 mil down from the top. So just transfer your markings up top there, leaving a nice little edge. And just as a guide, you can use an old 50mm hole saw. Just find your centre and just draw a small circle around. Doesn't have to be too good. Just so you know when you put it on the drill, when you've got to drill it, you know exactly where it has to be positioned. Before drilling the hole, we need to be able to take out all the flushing system inside the system out. To do that, just use a pair of multi-grips and just release the big nut on the bottom of the cistern. Just a couple of turns, it's not too hard. It's only plastic, you don't have to force it. And just spin it off. And then just take it out. That's for two reasons. One, you don't want to go too far through with your drill and damage. Also, it's easier cleaning once you've, once you've drilled it to get all those little bits of chips and that out of it. If you have access to a drill press, which we have in our warehouse, um, just make sure that you've lined everything up with the circle that you've marked and you've got plenty of water on hand. The ideal thing is an old water bottle with just a couple of holes in the lid. If you don't have access to a drill press, you can always use a cordless or a cord drill. Just the same things apply, water, and, a, and put, make sure you've got it on a nice steady surface that's a good height for you. Just place it on top where you've marked your hole, just drill it by hand, and just plenty of water again, and it, you'll find it's very easy just to go through. After you've finished drilling the, your hole, just make sure you just wipe off all the excess, not only on the outside but on the inside because it could maybe get in the way of flushing. You don't have to be spot on, but if there's any big big chips in there, just wipe it out with a rag. That's all you need to do. Once you've drilled, don't forget, you've got to put your working mechanism back inside. Uh, just reverse the steps that you did to take it out, poke it through the bottom, spin the base nut back on. Don't over tighten it, just needs a couple of turns. Your plumber, when he installs it, will always check those things anyway. Then you're ready to attach it to your to the uh, toilet seat and determine where your hole is in the wall. 
Once you've drilled your hole, put all your toilet together, position it where you've predetermined where you want it to go regarding pipes and that all through sewage and all that. You lift the lid off the top and you'll see where you've drilled your hole. For the Yodavac kit, just get a pencil, texture, pen, anything you mark it through and just basically just mark a mark on the wall. And once you take the toilet away, it'll show you exactly where you need to be. Now that we've got the 50mm pipe in place, we need to position the 50mm socket, which don't forget needs to be glued. After putting the 50mm socket in place, we need to put a 40 by 50 flat reducer in place, which just inserts inside the 50mm socket like so. After putting the 50mm socket and socket reducer in place, you have a piece of 40mm PVC pipe with a 40mm flexible hosing, which you insert like that. doesn't matter where you put it for the time being because that's for an adjustment reason later on. Then a shorter piece of 40mm pipe, then a 40 by 90 degree bend, which is the rest of your WC con connection in the rough end stage. Once you've put all your WC connection together in rough end stage, all you have to do is, is push, push it in to the flat reducer, like so. Once the WC connection is inserted in, in, in its rough end stage, the hole where we predetermined would go through the back of the toilet will determine the height. This, this flexible hose lets you adjust it up and down so you can pull it through the hole. Now we're getting into stage two, which, which is our fit off stage. Firstly, we're going to be drilling our hole, which we predetermined from our, the hole in the back of our system. We just use a standard 50 mil hole like so. After we've drilled the hole in the wall, it makes it easy to find the 40 mil bend that we've, that we've put on the end of the WC connection. Next, we need to put that small length of PVC, 40 mil, into that once it's been glued, and then insert one of the cover plates over the pipe. Once the pipe's through the wall, we just need to insert the pipe through the back of the system as on our display. Now we'll just trim off the piece of pipe inserted through the back of the system. And pull it out. Now it's time to insert the cover plate. The idea of these lines is so you can mark where you need to trim off the excess. So just insert it like that. Put it, say one, even two lines below the top of the, the system. That's, that's so the lid will go down safely onto the top. So just put a small mark on it, which one you need to cut it, and then just take it back off again. With a sharp Stanley knife, going by the mark and you've predetermined, just give it a nice, heavy, straight, score across the lines and then all you have to do snap it off and that's how easy it is once we've cut the cover plate in our predetermined area just insert it back onto the 40 mil pipe then we put in the balancing valve which just inserts straight into the 40 mil pipe like so it doesn't matter if you have it up or down doesn't matter. The balancing valve is fully adjustable. The best position to have it is, is in the fully open, but if you want to reduce the amount of air being sucked through it, you just close it one or two notches, but that is the best area. Then we just insert the lid back on top of the system. Now that you've finished installing your AVK2 kit per instructions, it's time for those little fit offs you need to do, which is either the exterior wall grill and even the interior roof grill which for your bathroom, laundry, shower, whatever you need to do.